Okay, so good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Old Testament survey on Psalms. So, three weeks na na-delay, no? No And power. Then, finally, karon naka, naka-survey na kita <laughs> on Psalms. So, welcome. So, first of all, let's go over sa kwan. overview and background sa Psalms. So, what what the Psalms are all about. So, let's start with the title of Psalms. In Hebrew, Psalms is Sefer Tehillim or Book of Praises. And fun fact, the root word for Tehillim is Hallel as in Not Hallelujah Hallel. or Praise the Lord. So, para ma-remember nyo ano meaning ng Sefer Tehillim. So, you can, uh, you can remember this fun fact. And in Greek, The, subject, the, the Septuagint translation of the title was Psalmoi, or Psalmoi, which means songs of accompaniment or string instruments. This word was translated from the Hebrew from the Hebrew word Mizmor, which appears in the titles of 57 no of the power. Psalms. So when the translators um, looked at the Psalms, they saw that this word Mizmor appeared in 57 of the titles and They thought that it's a good, you know, it's a good word to ano to translate in Greek para sa title sa ano sa book for ano for the Greek translation, and that leads us to the English translators. They transliterated the Greek title Psalmoi into Psalms, and that's why we have Psalms sa ano as the English title for the Book of Praises. So Psalms is a, po- a book of poetry. It is generally regarded as that. However, it is but only the surface of the book. Psalms is much more. It is also a book of prayer. The Psalms are poems read and meditated directed towards God. It is also a book of revelation. We discover traits of both God and man, no the power. nature of God's wor- world, and the hope of a Messiah throughout the poems. And Psalms also a book of response where God's people can internalize and personalize the poems as their own to lament or to bring praise. So overall, Psalms is God's word to man. And it is also man's word to God. Let's proceed the authorship no and date sa book. So who wrote the Psalms and when? So here we have a timeline of Who wrote, sa, who wrote the no, the Psalms? There are 100, 150 poems overall, with each with ano um different authors, you know? And here are ano the eight identified authors. There are ano there are Psalms now we call orphan Psalms who do not have a an author. And no power. out of ano out of two thirds of the Psalms which have ano which have authors. Ito yun sila. Ito yung mga authors na yun. And first is si Moses. Moses has one psalm sa Book of Psalms. And he lived around uh, 1400 BCE. And some scholars date yung ano yung psalm niya na, si- na isinulat was from 1405 BCE. And we, as we all know, David is one of the most famous, di ba? No power. And if not, ano, siya lang yung ano, kilalala na most people na nagsulat ng psalms. And some uh, some Sunday school teachers even uh, teach young kids na David wrote the Psalms. Well, not all of them actually, but ano, siya lang yung may pinakamaraming contribution. But he did not write all, the, all of the Psalms. So David lived at around 1035 to 970 BCE. And scholars suggest that he started writing the Psalms at around 1020 BCE. So when he was around 15 no years old, dun, dun siya nag-start na no, magsulat ng Psalms. Until sa ano, until his old age. So Jeduthun, Jeduthun was a director of music at the temple along with Asaph and Heman. Jeduthun was alive when David was also alive. But then when David died, di ba? Ano? Um, David died and then dun pa yung ano, dun pa nabuo yung temple. So Jeduthun was a contemporary of David but he outlived David to see the temple. The temple. And Jeduthun no was one of, the, one of the directors of music sa temple. And so was Asaph. And not only he was, ano, was he a director of music, he was the choir master sa temple. And another author is Solomon. Diba? 
Um, Solomon wrote one or two Psalms. Uh, we'll find out later. So Solomon, as we know, is the son of David, diba? the heir to the throne after his father. Um, he, re- he lived at around 990 to 931 BCE. So, na- niya pa itong si Jeduthun at Isaac and, you know, and, the, and the following na mga authors. And the next authors are the Sons of Korah. So the Sons of Korah is, pan, ano sila, um, it's a group of, ano, it's a group who are descendants of Kohath, the son of Levi, who served in the in the temple as musicians. So, um, na, hindi nakastate talaga kung sino-sino yung mga sons of Korah na nag-contribute Not sa Psalms. Pero ito yung ano nila, ito yung signature nila whenever ano, you read Psalms and you see, ano, yung sa, um, sa taas ng Psalms before mag-start yung Psalms, may ila, ilan sa mga Psalms na ito yung ano, ito yung nasa title nila. Uh, they were composed by the sons of Korah. And Ethan the Ezraite. So Ethan was a wise man who was mentioned when describing Solomon's wisdom. In 1 Kings 4, um, doon makita no natin, ano, uh, mabasa natin that Solomon was described as wise and he was wiser than Ethan the Ezraite. So from that, we can tell that Ethan was a wise man and he was ano, regarded as a counselor to Solomon. Although there are scholars who believe na siguro ibang Ethan yun. And we have Heman. Heman is also an Ezra- Ezraite. He is a siege or a lead singer of the family no of Korah. Diba yun yun? So related to sila, yung mga sons of Korah and si Heman, the Ezraite. So those are the authors no, throughout the history of um, Israel. Ito yung mga identified na authors. And it is good to note na Ethan and Heman Diba, they, they are regarded as an Ezraite and Ezra was ano was the reformer isa siyang pang reformer na nabuhay after sa exile no power after nasa exile so ano, ano ba tala exactly yung ano yung relationship ni ano ni Ethan with Solomon diba, ni, ano, he was regarded as Solomon's counselor we can't really tell there are another ano, debate among scholars so we just, ano, we just proceed. <laughs> so the compilation of the Psalms, there is internal evidence, for example, yung structure, and we'll find out later kung ano, why, why we can say na, ano, na, na arrange siya much later on. So there is internal evidence, such as the structure, that the Psalms were compiled and arranged during post-exilic times. So after na to, sa nakanker yung ano, Jerusalem, and then, nadala yung mga Judeans ano sa Babylon and bumalik sila so ito yung post exilic times so ano there are internal evidence na yung Psalms na arin siya na compile and arrange during those times Solomon Jehoshaphat and Jehoiada which are ano kings of Israel organized no temple singing which may mean that they contributed in organizing the Psalms Josiah was a reforming king who may also have contributed so Josiah was a king after sa ano, ilang generations na after ni Solomon and Jehoiada. And parang, I think yun yung time na nakalimutan na ng Israel kung sino, sino si Lord. And then Jos- Josiah was the king who found the scriptures and ano, who discovered again kung, ano, kung sino yung, ano, yung history no nila power. with the Lord. And it seems likely that Ezra, the great renovator of post-exilic Judaism, may have been responsible for putting the whole collection in its final form. So we proceed the structure. And here we, we can discover kung bakit ba nila nasabi na post-exilic times na ano, nabuo yung Psalms. The collection of 150 Psalms reflect an external structure as the Psalms are divided into five books no of power. unequal length, paralleling the five books of Moses. The five divisions of the book of Psalms. So ito yung mga, ano, mga books. The first book is from Psalms 1 to 41. And yung book 2 is Psalms 7, uh, 42 to 72. And within the, no, within the that book 2, mayroon pa tayong smaller division, smaller group of Psalms. Yung the Psalms of the Sons of Korah and yung Miktam Psalms. Yung Miktam is probably a musical or no literary power. term. Um, we're not really sure. Scholars have ano, parang suggestions kung anong meaning ng Miktam. It's a Hebrew word, but ano, there is little ano, parang evidences talaga to certainly 
know kung ano ba talaga meaning ng miktam. Book 3. Ito yung from Psalms 73 to 89. Ito yung mga Psalms of Asaph. Na nandito yung Psalms of Asaph from uh, chapter, uh, Psalms 73 to 83. Sa so book 4 naman is from Not Psalms power. 90 to 106. And book 5, yung last book, from Psalms 107 to 150. And under that, no? under that book, we have the Hallel Psalms. That we discussed earlier, Hallel means praise. And ito yung mga ano, ito yung mga psalms na nag ano na nagsisimula or ano predominant yung ano pre uh, um praise na ano na word or na theme so it ito yung from 113 to 118 you also have songs of degrees from 120 to 134 ito yung mga pilgrim songs what those are hindi rin ako sure but we can look into that ano sa future psalms of thanksgiving so we have from psalms 135 to 139 psalms of protection 140 to 143. And finally, yung last five books, or last five Psalms, na ano, the book of Psalms, yung Hallelujah Psalms, from 146 to 150. No power. The Psalms were gathered in separate collections that were eventually brought together into one book under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Each division ends with a doxological refrain. So, ito yung ano. Example ng doxological refrain is yung sa Psalms 41. Sa so last verse niya, sabi ito, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Yung mga doxological refrain, ito usually, may praise be to the Lord or praise the Lord, tapos may no amen. Power. And doon, makikita, if manotis mo yan sa, mga, sa isang psalm, you can say na yung psalm na yun is yung last ano last psalm sa ano yun, sa particular na book. Diba? May five books within the no? five divisions. And yun yung end ng isang division. So, dito makikita pala natin na, no? na yung Psalms inarin siya in a way na ito yung kinalabasan na yung ano yung mga end ng books may ano siya may, may praise be to the Lord and amen and amen so we no can power. see here na no na inarrange talo yung Psalms hindi lang siya no chronological na ito yung first Psalm na nabuo so ito yung chapter 1 ah, then yung ano yung next Psalm naman after that na naisulat yun na yung chapter 2 hindi siya ganun hindi siya chronological yung pag-arrange. Meron siyang themes, meron siyang specific na, no, na arrangement kung bakit ganun yung, ano, yung pag-numbering nila ng Psalms. So let's proceed sa historical setting. So what was happening when the Psalms were written? So Not according pa sa, no, kay W.A. Van Gemeren, yung nag, ano, uh, nagsulat ng expo- Expositor's Bible Commentary on Psalms, he says, The Psalms witness to the glory of Zion, the Davidic covenant, to the fidelity of God, to the Exodus and conquest traditions. to God the, con- the Creator, Redeemer, King, and to Yahweh as a Divine Warrior. We see an interplay of many different motives and emphasis, which, when isolated, help us better understand the Old Testament as a whole and its bearing on the New no Testament. Power. So it's beautiful, no? Sabi dito ni Van Gemeren, na uh, Psalms are not just ano, books of poems na, no, about expressing their emotions lang. It's a... theologically rich na book although hindi siya no primarily book for ano for theology but it's theologically theologically rich that you know understanding the psalms help us to understand the old testament as a whole di ba ang galing no so the writers of, of about two thirds of the psalms are identified in the superscriptions the super, superscriptions may be interpreted as colophon A note containing additional information about the piece, such as summary of contents, identity of the author or scribe, similar to what we see here in Psalms, and sometimes even musical notation. However, not all scholars give equal value to the titles of the Psalms. So, yung ano, tradition nila during that time, that time kung, ano, sa time ni David and Solomon, no so, power. sa ano, sa mga kapitbahay ng Israel, they also have this kind of ano, structure ng poetry. And usually, yung poetry nila may superscription, may parang title sa taas, and nag-describe kung ano, ano about yung poem, or sino nagsulat. Diba? And it's similar on how, uh, it's similar to what we see sa Psalms, diba? Sometimes, sinasabi doon na ano, a miktam, diba? And parang it's a musical term, and yun yung ano nakita natin, and we can regard the, ano, those superscriptions as colophon. No Pero, there are scholars who, ano, who, don't give equal value to the titles of the Psalms. Ang ibig sabihin nun, there are scholars who 
who see na, for example, they see na, no, it's a, a son of David. They don't totally um, agree na si David talaga yung nagsulat nun. Or may mga authors na, no, na they see na, for example, yung sabi, the sons of Korah, they, ano, they suggest that it might not totally not be them kung sino nagsulat. And for, for a few reasons why, but for now, hindi mo na natin discuss, i-discuss. The biblical writers of the Psalms wrote their pieces in different periods based on when they lived their lives. So kanina, na-discuss natin yung kailan nabuhay yung mga authors. David wrote 73 of the Psalms during the events of his life. Some were written before his ascension to the throne, while others, while he was king of Israel. The sons of Korah, who served as musicians in the temple, wrote no 11 power. Psalms. Asaph, one of David's choir masters, wrote 12 Psalms. King Solomon, to Ethan, 1, and Moses, 1. Since the book of Psalms is a collection of poetry from different authors of various times, there is no single singular historical setting in which to view its contents. However, ano, it is good to, ano, to keep in mind kung kailan na-arrange at na-compile yung Psalms. It might help in, ano, in studying or uh, reading the Psalms kung ano, kung, uh, ano, ano ba about yung Psalms. Number five. Purpose. So, what are the sums for? Some, uh, same as that of any part of scripture, sums is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we see that's a Second Timothy three, sixteen to seven. No power. In the sums, God not only speaks to His people; He also encourages them to use the language of the Psalms in individual and communal prayers and praise. By applying these ancient Psalms to, to a new situation, the life of faith, hope, and love of the individual Christian, the Christian family, and the church may, greatly, may be greatly enhanced. The Psalms encourage no a dialogical relationship between God and His children. For the unique features naman, we'll discuss kung ano-ano yung mga klase ng sums meron. Ano-ano mga ano, different categories of sums na matatagpuan natin within the book. So first, the lament sums. Um, the lament sums lay a troubled situation before the Lord, asking Him for help. This category is the largest by far, including up to a third of Not all power. the sums. There are community and individual laments set within a context of God responding in love or power. So yung examples ng mga lament psalms are yung Psalms 3, 12, and 13. Hymns of praise, which call, of, which call God's people to admire His great attributes and deeds. So examples nito ay yung Psalms 8, 93, and 145. Meron tayong ano, hymns of cel- celebrating no God's law. Di ba na alam natin ano, um, Psalms is, ano, uh, has the chapter has the longest chapter and ito yung Psalm 119 and Psalm 119 ano within that it ano we can see yung main theme niya talaga is is about God's law and it celebrates it we also have hymns of thanksgiving as with laments there are community uh community psalms and individual no psalms power. yung examples are Psalm 9 and Psalm 30 respectively Individual Thanksgiving Psalms. So, we also have Wisdom Psalms. Some of the Psalms share traits of other biblical wisdom literature with practical guidance and warnings. An example is Psalm 119. Reflect, uh, they reflect themes from the wisdom books. An example is Psalm 1 and Psalm 37. Another type no of power. Psalms is Songs of Confidence. Instead of falling into despair like a lament, Confidence some see opposition coming, but they rise to state their trust in God and His guidance. This enables worshippers to, de- to deepen their trust in God amid difficult circumstances. And ano, one of the most famous psalm, yung Psalm 23, is an example of confidence psalm, di ba? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Di ba? Sabi niya, but your rod and your staff, they comfort me. No so yun. And another type of psalm is historical psalms which take lessons from the history of God's dwe- God's dealing with His people. And an example is 
Sum 78. We also have royal sums. So they present the Davidic monarchy as the vehicle of blessing for God's people. Some of these are prayers, like Psalm 20. And there are some of the and some are you know, are no power. Thanksgiving. Some of Thanksgiving. So some uh, like Psalm 21. All of this, the royal sons relate to the Messiah, the ultimate heir of David, either by setting a pattern like Psalms 20 to 21 or by portraying the king's reign in such a way that only the Messiah can completely fulfill it. Psalms 2 and Psalms 72 are example, or by focusing on the future. So Psalms 110. No power. So another type of Psalms is yung poetic hymns. Dut, sulat na kay sound dut. No tower. Okay na? Hello? Okay na, clear. Okay. Ano sa nawala ang pan ng sound? Karon ra? Bagora, bagora. Okay. So another type of psalms is imprecatory psalms. No power. Diba? Uh, you may have heard of the word imprecatory and it is regarded as the most difficult type of psalm to understand. Imprecatory psalms call for God's judgment upon enemies. They use striking images and ultimately leave justice and vengeance to God alone. One of the no, examples is yung mga psalms ni David na uh, he writes against Dots nawala balik mo hang sound. Wala no gyapo. Hello. Ah kana. Okay na. Yun. So one of ano, one of uh, some of no David Psalms, diba? May sense sabi pa siya na ano, Lord crush their heads. Diba? Gusto niya na ano na i-crush ni Lord yung heads ng enemies niya para mamatay sila. Diba? It's a very ano, it's a very explicit na ano, na image and minsan makawonder ka um toto pa rin ba yun ni Lord? Like, is God listening to those Psalms? Like ano ba talaga yung reason kung bakit ano? And some That's na wala ka balik that's. No power. So the next type of psalms, we have psalms of remembrance. This is you know, a psalm that looks back at what God has done in the past and seeks to remind everyone of these acts and promises. So an example is Psalm 136. So let's, you know, let's move to key verses. Um, you mga verses na pinili namin, these are you know, like famous power. verses, famous you know, lines sa mga psalms na we often hear as you know, parang inadap as songs. So first is Psalm 23.1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Diba? One of the most famous na, no, na, um, na Psalms is ito, Psalm 23. And Psalm 42.1, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. Diba may kanta ngayon na, no? As the deer, no power. Uh, as, the, as the deer, nakalimutan yung lyrics, basta as the deer, you know, as the deer, um, Pants for waters, so my, so my soul thirsts for you. Yun yung ano, lyrics ng kanta. And galing yun siya sa Psalms na ito. 
And another is Psalms 51.10. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Ito yung Psalm ni David nung nag, ano, nagkasala siya with Bathsheba and the prophet Nathan confronted him no and this was his Psalm of Repentance. And itong specific na line na to, um, we also hear that from, ano, from another song, di ba, of today. You're a pure heart. That's what I long for. A heart that follows hard after thee. Yun yung lyrics ng kanta. And galing rin yun siya, no? It was adapted from this verse. And we have Psalm 150, verse 6. Ito yung last verse sa book of Psalms. Let everything that has breath, uh, let everything that breathes, sing praises to the Lord. Praise no the Lord. Power. Yung kanta, di ba? Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Ayan. So, specific advice for reading. How should we approach the Psalms? And for ano, for this survey, we only have two advice, two advices kung paano natin i-approach ang Psalms. And this was ano, uh, this advice, ito yung Dots, nawala na po din mo ang sound. Okay na. Dots, nag, ginamove ni mo ang PowerPoint. Or hina lang d'yo ang internet? No power. Oh, sorry. Naka-ano, yeah. naka-post share di. Sorry, guys. Okay. So, ito yung mga no, key verses as I was explaining earlier. Okay. Thank you, Sir GM, for, for informing. And these are the ano, specific advice for reading. So, first, let Psalms seep into your soul. So, Psalms are to be read, meditated, and internalized. Sympathize no and power. make the poems your own prayer. So when we read through the Psalms, it's it's really ano, advisable na we relate with Dots, nawala na po ka Dots. No power. Hello? Okay na. So we make the ano the prayer our own. And another ano, another advice, iba nakita niyo to na meme, David in the Psalms be like, ano, sometimes he's happy, sometimes he's not. He's like really depressed. Sometimes he wants to praise God. Sometimes he ano, he recognizes the universe, diba, in all its majesty and he attributes that ano, no power. to God's wisdom. And sometimes depressed talaga siya, na gusto niya ano, patayin na ni Lord yung mga kaaway niya. So we can see ano The, yung mga psalms na yun, hindi na siya randomly organized. They are, ano, they are organized in, ano, in a um, formal structure. And it is, ano, it is really helpful when we recognize the arrangement. Because some has a, psalms has a structure. They fall into categories and it is helpful to know them. So it's helpful to know kung gamit no psalm ba yung binabasa natin. If, ano ba siya, if it's a Thanksgiving psalm. Or if it's a, ano, an imprecatory na psalm, it helps us to understand and to relate with, ano, with the psalms even, ano, even deeper. For themes, ano, tracing ideas through the psalms. So what are the ano, main themes or ideas na makikita natin as we explore through the psalms? So um, psalms take the basic themes of multi no theology and turns them into song. So yung first, ano, first, Theme is monotheism, creation and fall, election and covenant, covenant membership, and lastly, eschatology. Monotheism, the one God, maker, and ruler of all, will vindicate his goodness and justice in his own time. Everyone must know and love this God, whose purity, power, wisdom, faithfulness, no and unceasing love are breathtakingly beautiful. Creation and fall. Uh, though God made man with dignity and purpose, all people since the fall are beset with sins and weakness and weaknesses that only God's grace can heal. And the Psalms explore this. Next is election and covenant. The one true God chose a people for himself and bound himself to them by his no covenant. Power. This covenant expressed God's intention to save his people. And th- and through them to bring light to the world. Covenant membership. In his covenant, God offers grace to his people, forgiveness of their sins, shaping of their lives to reflect his own glory, and to be, uh, 
to play a part as light to the Gentiles. No power. And in covenant membership na ano, na theme, each member of God's people is responsible to believe God's promises and to grow in obeying His commands. Those who do this enjoy the full benefits of God's love and find delight in knowing Him. The well-being of God's people as a whole affects the well-being of each member. Each one shares the joys and sorrows of the others. Kaya makita natin ano, yung mga sums, some of them, it's, ano, it's not just individual yung nagpapray. It's like a community. Parang ano siya, plural yung, ano, yung mga pronouns dun. It's us, it's we. So it's ano, part of the covenant membership na theme. When believers suffer, they should not seek revenge but should pray. They can they can be confident that God will make all things right in His own time, di ba? When we see ano yung imprecatory prayer, di ba parang revenge man yung ano hinihingi ni David. And as you can see, no he power. is parang ano he is longing, he is ano deeply desiring revenge for his enemies. Pero hindi niya ginagawa, hindi niya inenak yung desire niya. Instead, he vents out to the Lord, and dun yung binibigay, dun yung pinapalabas yung ano galit niya, yung disappointments niya, yung sorrow na nafeel niya. So, hindi siya yung nag act ng, ju- ng, ano, ng judgment or ng justice. He brings it to God. And lastly, eschato- eschatology. The story of no God's power. people is headed toward a glorious future in which all kinds of people will come to know the Lord. The personal faithfulness of God's people contributes to His ultimate purpose. The Messiah, the ultimate heir of David, will lead His people in the great task of bringing light to the Gentiles. So yung mega themes, no, other themes rin sa, ano, sa Psalms is yung praise, God's power, forgiveness, thankfulness, no and trust. So praise. Psalms are songs of praise to God as our creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Focusing our thoughts on God moves us to praise Him. Praise is recognizing, appreciating, and expressing God's greatness. Dudes, nawala na ka, Dudes. No power. Hello? Okay na? Okay. So again, the praise is recognizing, appreciating, and expressing God's greatness. The more we know Him, the more we can appreciate what He has done for us. God is all-powerful and he, and he always acts at the right time. When we feel powerless, God can help us. He, he is sovereign, no sovereign over every situation. His strength can overcome the despair of any pain or trial. God's power is shown by the ways He reveals Himself in creation, history, and His Word. We can always pray that He will deliver, protect, and sustain us. Forgiveness. Many Psalms are intense pray- prayers asking, for God, asking God for forgiveness. Because God forgives us, we can pray to Him honestly and directly. No power. God forgives us when, when we confess our sin and turn from it. When we receive His forgiveness, we move from alienation to, intim- to intimacy, from guilt to love. Thankfulness. We are grateful to, to God for His personal concern, help. That's now wala ka balik. No power. Yeah. Not only does He pr- protect, guide, and forgive us, but His creation provides everything we need. When we realize how we benefit from knowing God, we can fully express our thanks to Him. By thanking Him often, we develop spontane- sp- spontaneity in our prayer life. Trust. God is faithful and just. When we put our no trust power. in Him, He quiets our hearts because He because he has been faithful throughout history, we can trust him in times of trouble. People can be unfair and friends may, be, may desert us, but we can trust God. Knowing God intimately drives away doubt, fear, 
and lowliness. So let's proceed the theology. Who is the God in the Psalms? The Psalms deal primar primarily with God. No power. Man, especially Israel as a covenant community, and the individuals that in that community, and resolution of the tension between a holy, transcendent God and, sin and sinful, alienated, finite human beings. Some academics argue that the Psalter includes the deepest theology in the Old Testament and maybe in the Bible. In addition, the Psalms value the Psalms value value to the New Testament writers their value as Old Testament. Dude's no sound. No power. Okay, again, the Psalms urge us to consider how God's people viewed him in the past. Probably more than any other book in the Bible, the Psalter bridges the gap between then and now, the ancient world and the modern world. How much more should this be true among 20th century Christians if God's people before the, incarn before the incarnation no would have such confidence in the Lord, testimony to his grandeur and willingness to help? Our devotional lives, family patterns, and the fellowship and testimony of Jesus Christ's church can be potentially transformed by the Psalms. We are on the verge of losing the Psalter in our churches. In fact, many have already done so. So it is no surprise that many members in our congregations don't know no how to No power. Pray. So lastly, ito ni ano, uh, when we do our Old Testament survey, di ba, we, we have our that portion called Jesus Lens. About where is Jesus in that book? Since we believe that you know, the Bible is one unified story that leads to Jesus, the Bible project. And we also believe that uh, we, co uh, we consider those books containing hints of who Jesus Christ is. And no more so sa Psalms, kasi we have Psalms that are specifically dedicated to, ano, to portraying the Messiah. Many of the Psalms written 1,000 years before Christ, including accounts that have absolutely no application to anyone else, anyone else in history except Christ. They are called Messianic Psalms. Um, as we know, Christ is the Greek equivalent of Messiah in Hebrew, which means uh, no the power. anointed, diba? or prang the chosen one. <laughs> A forthcoming king from David's descent was also indicated from particular mentions to David. There are other statements that appear to be indirect revelation of the Messiah, aside from explicitly Messianic texts. So here is a list of ano, yung mga um, statements in the Psalms that the New Testament are explicitly said to refer to Christ. And isa no dito ay yung ano, si Jesus Christ mismo nag ano, nag, nag quote. And yun yung ano, um, ito, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. And he, ano, and he stated that sa, ano, sa Matthew 22, verse 44. And I think this was another you know, time when Jesus no was, ano, was conversing with the Pharisees. And they questioned Jesus kung ano, yung, ano ba yung authority niya? Bakit sila ano, gumagalaw sa sabak? Diba? And the Pharisees were angry at him. And sa, ito mga sabi ni Jesus, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool to your feet. And sa ang conclusion pa dito ni Jesus. And so, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. And mas nagalit sa kanya yung ano, yung mga Pharisees because he claims not only to be ano, no power. Uh, to be a parang 
na Messiah pero ginagamit niya mismo yung ano yung scripture di ba and with accuracy because the ano, the, the Pharisees and then yung mga uh, Old Testament scholars nila at that time also recognize this ano messianic sounds So ito yung mga ano, list of messianic psalms talaga, yung mga chapter. We have Psalm 2, Psalm 8, 16, 22, 45, 69, Love 72, power. 89, 110, 118, and 132. And each, the, each of them may specific pa talaga na theme exploring what ano, a specific, ano, uh, specific trait sa Messiah. Okay. So ito na pala yung ano yung end guys. And here are our here are our sources sa ano sa Old Testament survey. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for bearing with no me. Power. Dahil lagi nawawala yung mic and everything. And late rin tayo nag-start. But praise God no. To God be all the glory for the, for the success of this Old Testament survey on Psalms. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.